All right, thank you everybody who's joining us today. Today we'll be talking about the career of a dentist. We have uh, Dr. Tatum Louie with us to discuss her job. She is a dentist in Texas and went to school here as well. And she's just gonna give us a little overview about what got her interested in being a dentist and what does it mean to be a dentist? Yeah, all right. Um, well, thanks for having me today. So what got me interested in being a dentist was I always knew I wanted to be in healthcare. I always wanted to be able to help people. Um, and my aunt was actually a hygienist, so she was the one that introduced mm -hmm. me to teeth and all of that. And uh, so, yeah, from there, it was, it was a pretty easy decision for me. And uh, we'll kind of get more into what all of that means. But really, at the end of the day, a dentist is really looking at the teeth, looking at pathology, screening for cancer, um, looking at the jaw joints, things like that. Um, you know, we, we help patients that have toothaches, whether they need extractions or root canals, crowns, fillings. Um, and then we get to do some of the fun cosmetic things like veneers and whitening and all of that. So th there's quite a bit to do with dentistry. It's pretty um, encompassing and every day is a little bit different, which is always exciting. That's awesome. Did you always like teeth? Uh, not really. I mean, if you can get past the saliva and the spit, then you're, you're good to go. All right. Well, can you tell us about what your typical day is where you work? Yeah, yeah. So normally we work eight to five. It's a pretty stable type of, you know, work-life balance, which is nice. You get, generally you always get an hour lunch break. Um, and then every day is, like I said, it's a little different. So maybe you'll do some exams, you'll do some cleanings, you'll do a couple of extractions, you know, maybe you'll adjust a denture, um, give some Invisalign trays, see how those are tracking. And so every day is a little bit different, but pretty much without without change if you you know work eight to five you're, you're done when you go home which is nice you don't have to take work home with you that is very nice and do you normally work all the days of the week yeah that's a good question so it really depends on what position you're in but most docs work between three to five days a week it's really what kind of lifestyle and what kind of income they're hoping to accomplish so some doctors will work on Saturdays um, and then maybe take a day off during the week, which is what we do. Um, some days they'll work kind of later hours, so maybe they'll work 10 to 7 and give some later appointments for patients after work. Um, but that's kind of the nice thing about dentistry. You can set your hours and um, go from there. All right. Well, how many different types of jobs are in your field of work and what are they? Yeah, so there's there's quite a few. I'm a general dentist, which means I do a little bit of everything. Um, you can always specialize beyond being a dentist. You know, you can specialize in oral surgery, which is going to be a lot of trauma, um, extractions of wisdom teeth, things like that. You can be a gum specialist. You can work with kids. You can work with braces. You can do pathology. Um, all of those are kind of specialties that require a little bit more schooling, which we can touch on that later. Um, there's also other options. You can be a hygienist that takes a little bit less schooling. You can be an assistant. Um, they get paid on an hourly basis, but um, generally you really don't need much beyond an associate's degree to be an assistant. Um, you can also be a lab tech, which means you're the one that's in the lab and you're getting impressions and you're fabricating these crowns, you're fabricating these gorgeous um, aesthetic cases and you know, you're really working with your hand skills there. So that that's a fun one too. So lots of options. Very cool. And for our middle school students who may not have heard of what an associate's degree is, it's when you just go to two years of college. It's kind of a, a smaller degree than your full bachelor's. And so, um, so yeah, lots of different options. Have you yeah. ever had a kid bite you? Yes, it's a uh, part of the job and uh, it happens more often than you think. I've had adults bite me too, you know, they don't, they don't discriminate, but it's really the two-year-olds that you have to look out for. They're the, they're the chompers. I, I would probably have bit my ginger. So <laughs> it happens a lot. <laughs> um, and so what type of talents or skills does your job take? Yeah, um, I think communication is one of the biggest things, you know, I'm not gonna lie, doctors and dentists, we kind of have a bad rap, people get scared, um, they're terrified to come to the dentist. Um, so being able to talk with the patient, get 
a relationship with them, build trust with them, being able to do that is going to make or break you as a healthcare provider. Um, if patients don't trust you, they're, they're not going to believe you, they're not going to do any of your work. So being able to communicate and have empathy and just kind of communicate what you're wanting to do is really big. Um, another thing would be, you know, fine motor skills, working with your hands. You know, you kind of have to be an artist a little bit to be a dentist. You know, you're, you're building teeth out of nothing sometimes. So you're working on these tiny little teeth in the back of the mouth and, you know, you're working with a mirror. So things go the opposite direction when you look in a mirror. So you really have to have some spatial awareness and, and hand-eye coordination. Um, so art is, plays a big role in it. Um, and then I think the last thing that most people maybe don't think about is probably critical thinking. So when a patient maybe has a broken tooth, there's so many ways that you can fix it, repair it, um, extract it, replace it. So kind of thinking about your patient and, you know, factoring in their, their finances, their ability to, you know, receive treatment, their medical background, you know, those all kind of take things into account, you know, with medical, you kind of have maybe one way to fix a patient at the end of the day, but with dentistry, you have so many options. And so it's kind of your job to facilitate those options and which one's best for the patient. So, yeah. And how has your life and interactions with patients changed since the pandemic? Yeah, um, so patients have been a lot more hesitant to come in, you know, they don't want to leave the house, which makes sense. But um, really, at the end of the day, our schedules have just kind of been pulled out a little bit. We're not seeing as many patients a day so that we can do all the proper cleaning, um, changing of all of our PP between patients, you know, between the gowns and the masks and um, all of that. So it's, it's changed quite a bit, but slowly but surely getting back to normal. Good. Um, and are there any limitations on your personal or your social life? Uh, do your job? Yeah, um, actually quite the opposite. That's a really nice thing about dentistry, especially for women. You, you really get to set your hours, like I said. So eight to five is pretty much standard, but if you know in advance, like, you know, I gotta leave for my kids play and I need to leave at three, you just block it off and you don't schedule patients for that. Um, at the end of the day, there's not very many true dental emergencies that can't wait. And honestly, when they do happen, it's usually kids and those usually go to the specialists. So um, like I said, eight to five. And if you want to change your schedule, you can because with dentistry, a lot of it is on you. You set your own schedule. So it's, it's kind of how much you want to work and how often you want to work. Awesome. Um, what are some things, maybe you've talked a lot about the things you like in your job and what's attractive about it. What are some things you don't like as much? Yeah, um, so sometimes patients come in, like I said, they're scared, they're in pain, and sometimes that doesn't make people very nice or very grateful. Um, so sometimes they're a little bit ruder or maybe a little mean and, you know, you kind of have to not take that to heart and not take it personally and kind of understand where they're coming from. You know, they are in pain and they are scared. Um, so it's still kind of your job to do the best you can and treat them with kindness and, and do everything you can to help even if you don't like them very much. So that, that can be hard sometimes. Um, and I think a lot of dentists tend to be perfectionists. Um, so they want everything to be the best as they can, the best as possible. And sometimes the conditions just aren't that great. And sometimes your best is not not as great as it always is. So that can be really hard just trying to be perfect in an imperfect world sometimes. That is true. I, I fully agree with that. Yes. <laughs> and just to talk a little bit now about some of the education and training you need to be a dentist or some of the job, other jobs you're talking about as well. Um, what type of education does this job require of students? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so to be a dentist, generally it's four years of a bachelor's degree. A lot of people will do a biology or some sort of science degree just because it grits all of your prerequisite courses taken care of, but no means you have to um, major in that. You can major in whatever your um, interests are, and that's what I recommend, and um, just making sure you get those prereqs. And then after that, it's four years of dental school to be a dentist. Um, and that'll get you your doctorate. Um, as far as the other 
specialties, those range from two to seven years on top of your four-year doctorate degree. Um, hygienists, they have a couple different programs, so they kind of combine their bachelor's and their two-year hygienist degree. Sometimes you can squeeze it down into four past high school. Um, so there's a lot of different routes you can do for a hygienist. And then for the assistant, like I said, um, it's either a two-year associate degree. Sometimes you can get just your high school um, diploma and you can go to a dental assisting school that's only a couple of months. Um, sometimes they're online. So there's a lot of different schooling for dental assistants. Um, and then lab techs are kind of like a technical school that you would go to after you get your high school diploma. So lots of different degrees. You can go to school forever if you want, or there's other options that are much less cool. Awesome. And if you, you know, we're talking to a middle school or high school student, is there any way, or how would you suggest for them to kind of figure out maybe if this is something that they would like? Yeah, I would definitely say your best option would be reach out to your dentist, reach out to any dentist in your area, tell them you're interested, and they, most dentists would love to have you in the office, let you shadow, let you take a look around, um, and I would definitely recommend that if you think you want to be a dentist, make sure that you're okay with a little bit of blood and a little bit of spit and maybe someone biting your fingers every now and then. Um, just make sure that it's something that you can handle and... Um, Make sure it's something that you think you're interested in, but you'll see quite a bit if you follow a dentist around for a day and that'll give you a really good idea. Awesome. And what classes and courses should a student take to prepare for this career? Yeah, so I mentioned the um, biology degree is kind of the easiest as far as getting all those prereqs taken care of. Um, art classes are really helpful, like I talked about. You're kind of an artist at the end of the day, so anything working with your hands, fine-tuning those hand skills, um, like maybe a potting class, something like that, that'll be helpful. And then the biggest thing I would recommend is business classes. Um, dental school is going to provide you with the all of the knowledge to be a dentist, um, but they don't teach you how to be a business owner. And that is one of the really good opportunities that comes with being a dentist is you can own your business and then all the freedoms are with you. You make all of the decisions, um, but like I said, you don't have a business degree from dental school, so a lot of that, if that's the route you want to go, it's really important to kind of try to learn as much as you can. Yeah, that's true. The business degree, a lot of people don't think about that um, yeah. not part of it always, or, you know, doing some business classes to understand um and so for your working conditions is do you work a lot of times with other people or are you by yourself yeah um that kind of depends again on what kind of position you have right now i work in a solo doc office which means i'm the only doctor in the office um, so i see all of the patients we're also a newer office so we don't have a hygienist which means we do um, all the cleanings ourselves as well um, so there's kind of pros and cons for that. I'm able to see the patients a lot more one-on-one, -on -one, so I get to kind of build a little bit more rapport with them while I'm cleaning their teeth, and it's kind of an, an easy way to relax and unwind a little bit with a cleaning and take a break from all those extractions, so it's kind of nice. And with all these different things you're doing and working with, are there any, you know, health hazards in your job? Yeah, um, so obviously with COVID, um, dentistry is kind of one of the higher risk positions now with all the aerosols, which essentially is just kind of droplets from the patient's mouth and it has any bacteria or viruses that are in their mouth um, and they tend to go in the air. So right now that's kind of the biggest concern. That's why we wear, like I said, the surgical hat, the gown, the gloves, the two masks, the everything so that's one of the big ones um, needle sticks sometimes also is a concern you know if you inject a patient with a needle and then you stick your finger with the needle then any pathogens or illnesses that that patient have they can be transferred to you so being careful with your scalpels and your needles that's always a big um, health concern and then the last one is really your neck and your back you know leaning over patients all the time um, really, really wears on your back at the end of the day. So that's kind of one of the main things that keep doctors from practicing is back pain. So it's really important to be healthy, you know, strengthen those muscles, stretch, 
um, and just be active and just try to be as healthy as you can so you can practice as long as you can. Um, okay. Um, and what do you, do you do any type of exercises or working out to help make sure that sitting like yeah. that? You know? <laughs> yeah, I kind of play around with a lot of different things. You know, yoga is nice to kind of clear your mind and relax. Maybe you had a troublesome patient that's like really weighing you down. And so yoga is nice to just kind of let it all go um, and not take work home with you. Pilates is nice because it's a really nice stretch. Um, and you know, running is always good for the good for the heart. They say. And um, do you in you said you know you work a lot of dentists work in a practice and things like that. Some of them are groups, some of them are independent. So do you work for yourself or for someone else? And yeah. So there's a lot of different options. Um, currently, I work for a corporate office, which means they handle all of the business side. They do the marketing, the scheduling, everything. And I just show up and I'm, I'm the doctor and then I go home and they handle everything. So that's nice for younger doctors that are just kind of getting their feet wet um, and just getting into their career. Um, other options, like I talked about, was owning your office. So Within that, you can be your own owner. You own the whole practice. You take care of the marketing. You take care of the, you know, finances. So you can see where those business classes would be really helpful. Um, you can do a partnership, which means you and another doctor own 50% of the office, and you guys split patients that way. Um, you can also be an owner and hire a second doctor as an associate, which means that doctor works for you, vice versa. But you can be an associate and work for an older doctor that owns the practice. Um, other options, you can go into the Army. Um, and a lot of times with the Army, you can enlist and sign up for X number of years. And with that commitment, they'll pay back your student loans. Um, so that's a really nice opportunity. Another one is like rural clinics, you know, out in the, you know, where there isn't a whole lot of offices. If you'll commit so many years there, then they'll pay back your student loans. And so there's a lot of really good opportunities there. Um, you can also be a hygienist like we talked about. You can do research. Um, you, once you get your doctorate, you can go into research if you want. You can also teach. Um, a lot of doctors that end up having health problems, they can't practice anymore, they go into teaching. And a lot of doctors go directly into teaching. If that's their passion and that's what they want to do, then um, that's another option as well. Um, so yeah, lots of different things and a lot of ways to get help too with not having to have student loans or if you know we don't have as much money to be able to go to school and college and different things. It sounds like there's a lot of options. Yeah. Um, and so talking about money, questions on uh, finances is how much is the salary typically uh, for a dentist? Yeah. So it kind of depends. Um, at the end of the day, you know, we were talking about how many days a week do you want to work? Do you want to work three days? Do you want to work five days? So most dentists are paid on production, which means you get a percentage of what you do. So let's say you do an extraction for $300 and you maybe get 25% of that. Um, the other 75% goes to paying your staff, paying your lease, paying for your materials, all of that. Um, that's kind of generally how it goes for an associate and for a doctor that works for a corporate office. Um, if you're an owner, it's a little different. If you're an owner, you pretty much pay everyone. You pay your lease, you pay for all your materials and your staff and whatever's left over, usually a lot higher than 25%, then you get that. So generally owners make quite a bit more, um, depending again how often they're working, but ballpark usually right out of school you're making about 150,000 and then it just kind of goes up from there depending on how quick you are how many days you're working all of that so it really it really depends but you can definitely expect six figures and, and paying back those loans pretty quickly awesome and um so you kind of explained how the different types of payment works um as well. So that answered my, my last question too at the same time. Um, and I think it's just kind of our final question just for 
a student who is considering this as something maybe I'm interested in or a field I'd like to go into, what is your advice for them to pursue this? Yeah, um, I would just say learn as much as you can about it. Really focus on getting those hand skills the way they should be. You know, if you play the piano, play a musical instrument, you like to sculpt, whatever. Um, focus on your interests, try to be as healthy as you can because dental school is very difficult and it's hard to be healthy during that. Um, but really just exercise and, you know, like I said, try to shadow a dentist and make sure that that's really what you want to get into and it's something that interests you. Um, you know, it's a great profession to be in, but if you're not interested in it, then it's not going to be, it's not going to be worth your while. You know, you really have to enjoy what you do and, and love it at the end of the day because it is hard and if you don't love it then you're going to burn out really quick so try to get as much exposure talk to dentists talk to hygienists see what they like and you know if it's if it's right for you awesome well thank you for joining us today and to all the students watching please make sure to fill out your survey remember you need 80 percent of your surveys filled out to receive your final certificate for the course and be able to put it on your cv um, if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out to us, and until next time.